Hi, this is the Chapter 2 overview video. Chapter 2 kinematics covers motion and introduces terms displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Because the chapter is rather long, I try to break it up into some groups, which you will see in modules on the course Canvas site. I think most people will find the first few sections dealing with the displacement, coordinate systems, and velocity and speed reasonably intuitive. There might be some new information there for you, but for the most part, the physics definition of velocity and speed matches with our intuitive sense of velocity and speed, except that in physics, we care about direction when we talk about velocity, and we don't care about the direction when we talk about speed. You can read about that in the section. So most people have great intuition for velocity. It's the acceleration that many of you will have to start developing a new correct physical intuition for. So I encourage you to read through this long section carefully and follow some of the given examples. And there will be an assignment with reading questions covering these first four sections in particular so that you can slow down for this section 2.4 and um, just think through some of the potentially confusing things dealing with the acceleration. Now, with the next two, two sections, that is section 2.5 and 2.6, things will get a little bit more mathematical. Section 2.5 gives you kinematics equations for motion in one dimension with a constant acceleration. Um, oh, here's the summary of equations that's introduced in this section. And in section 2.6, the example of objects falling under gravity is used to illustrate motion in 1D with a constant acceleration. I hope you feel comfortable with the level of math being used in these two sections, but even if not, uh, don't worry. Our goal is to cover concepts of physics with as little math as possible. And these sections simply have an exceptionally large portion of algebra. In that spirit, especially for sections 2.7 and 2.8, projectile motion and circular motion, I want you to absorb the concept being illustrated here. Projectile motion in particularly interesting case, both because it describes a very common physical phenomena. If you played any ball sport, you have seen a projectile motion. And because how unintuitive some parts of it is, you will have an essay assignment to explore this in more detail, but let me point this out now. The most important thing to get with projectile motion is that motions along perpendicular axis, that is vertical and horizontal axis, are independent. And that's what this figure is showing, those two motions being broken up into horizontal motion and vertical motion. So as I said, there will be an essay assignment to explore this in more detail, but I just want you to mention that now. <laughs> Um, I included a circular motion mainly for some topics we will discuss after exam one. So for now, please skim through this short section and watch the lecture video on circular motion. We will call back to these concepts when we need them later. Oh, one last thing. In addition to the questions and exercises you answered as you worked through the chapter, at the end of the chapter, you are going to see your first essay assignment. The goal of these assignments are to illustrate key concepts, usually with videos that are not easy to get the first time you see it. So please leave enough time to work on these questions. All these essay assignments are peer graded. What this means is, if you submit your answer after the assignment becomes due, you will see submissions of three of your peers. 
and you will grade them according to this rubric. You will have access to the model answers as you grade your peers. And I think this process will help you understand the concepts better. That's all. As you work through the modules on Canvas, you will see a couple additional lecture videos aimed at explaining challenging ideas. Please give yourself enough time to work through them slowly. Bye.